So we now have to move an object from infinity to a point P, and we calculate the work that I have to do. So here is capital M, and here is that point P, and infinity is somewhere there. It's very, very far away, and I come in from infinity with that object with mass M, and I finally land at point P. Since gravity is a conservative force, and since my force is always the same in magnitude, except in opposite direction, it doesn't matter how I move in, it will always come up with the same answer. So we might as well do it in a civilized way and simply move that object in from infinity along a straight line. It should make no difference because gravity is a conservative force. So infinity is somewhere there. The force that I will experience, that I will have to produce, is this force. The force of gravity is this one. The two are identical, except that mine is in this direction. This is increasing value of r, so mine would be plus m mg divided by r squared if I'm here at location r and let this be at a distance capital R from this object. You can already see that the gravitational potential energy, when I come from infinity with a force in this direction and I move inward, you can already see that gravitational potential energy will always be negative. For all points, anywhere, it doesn't matter where I am, it will always be negative. And you may say, gee, that's sort of a strange thing, negative potential energy. Well, that is not a problem. Remember that depending upon how you define your zero level here, you also end up with negative values for potential energy. So there's nothing sacred about that. What is important, of course, if we get the right answer for the gravitational potential energy, that when we move away from this object, that the gravitational potential energy increases. That's all that matters. But whether it is negative or positive is irrelevant. So we already know it's going to be negative, and so we can now evaluate the work that I have to do when I go from infinity to that position capital R. So here comes the work that Walter Lewin has to do when we go from infinity to that point, which is capital R radius from this object. Think of it as the sun or the earth, either one is fine. So that is the integral going from infinity to R of my force, which is plus, because it's an increasing value of R, mmg divided by R squared, dr. That's a very easy integral. This is minus one over R, so I get mmg over R with a minus sign, and it has to be evaluated between infinity and capital R. When I substitute for R infinity, I get a zero. And so the answer is minus m mg over capital R. And this is the potential, gravitational potential energy at any distance, capital R, that you please, away from this object. At infinity, it's now always zero. Earlier you had a choice where you chose your zero. When you're near Earth and when G doesn't change, you had a choice. Now you no longer have a choice. Now the gravitational potential energy at infinity is fixed at zero.